Welcome back to RetroAxis. On the last episode, I created a uh, crossover cable which allows you to hook up an Atari joystick to a ZX Spectrum uh, without modifying either device. Uh, one of the things that I left undone was essentially wrapping the, uh, the connector into a, into a decent looking case. So uh, I, I 3D printed um, this case and as you can see here, it's, it's wrapped pretty nicely. It's got the cable, um, you know, essentially the boot here is nicely placed within the, within the cable. But you can see I still have an exposed wire. So what's happening right now is I've got, uh, just coming off this 3D print, I've actually got a bottom for this case, which should help to essentially, you know, make essentially a lid where if I need to service it, I can, but it should be a nice tight fitting lead. I just finished doing all the measurements and created the CAD and there's the print now. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull it off the printer uh, we'll, we'll test it out and then um, I'll show you how I created uh, both the case and the bottom. And I'll also be posting those files for uh, download on uh, www.retroaxis.info on the content server under episode 006. So uh, stay tuned and we'll get this put together. All right, so welcome back. I've got the bottom completed and you can see here the way that I designed this essentially was to um, try and match it up with, with the, uh, the case itself. So as, as part of my case, you can see if you look closely enough how we've got the DB9 connector. It's actually screwed into the case. The wiring is tucked away in here. The boot is, um, I'd actually, when I designed the top part of the case, I'd actually designed this boot um, to, to slide right over this notch so it fits perfectly. So on the top, on the lid, I did something very similar where essentially I have a bit of a notching here. It's, it's probably not completely necessary. Um, and also for the DB9 connector. Now the idea is that this should fit just inside of this case. So let's go ahead and see if my measurements were correct. I didn't measure this down to the millimeter. And as you hear, it's actually snapping in exactly as I had hoped. I am anticipating maybe a little bit of issue here in the front. And I think it's going to have to do with this part of the connector. But let's see if I thought I had measured that out as well. But I think, yeah, I think I might have to go back and, and redo this particular drawing. I'm off just a little bit. Right here, you can see the problem is, is this is trying to go over it. I think it's just a little bit off. Yeah, so I'll modify the front end of this, this bottom cap, and we should be fine. The rest of it seems like it's going to fit perfectly. So I think I did a pretty good job of getting it almost spot on. So I'll make the necessary adjustments and be right back. All right, so back in the CAD tool, um, what I'm doing is I'm essentially going to block out a two by seven, that's millimeter area. So just as a tip on the 3D printing, I'm still pretty new to the 3D printing process as a whole, but um, I have learned a few things about the printing process and some little, a couple of tips that I'll share with you right quick. One thing I did found was that using a roll of blue tape, um, if you cover your print surface with the blue tape, it makes it a lot easier to remove your print once it's finished. You simply peel and then getting it off is a lot easier. The first couple of prints that I tried I just used the, the, the plate as it was um, and found that my, uh, first of all, I was scratching up the plate trying to get, get it off. And then secondarily, uh, it was really difficult to remove them. So I found that using the, using the blue painter's tape uh, works really well. And there's different qualities of painter tape. This one's just a little bit nicer in quality. Um, and I found that, that that does make a difference. 
Um, the other thing is you want to use a, a glue stick. Um, so it actually came with my printer and um, I found that uh, using it essentially helps. And what it is here is I've got this, um, this is a disappearing purple glue, uh, it came in this stick. Um, but essentially, if you kind of can guess how large your print's gonna be, mine's not very large, but just adding a little bit of this glue um, just to the section where it's gonna print um, helps it adhere to the printing to the printing base, and I found that that makes a huge a huge difference. Um, so let me go ahead and kick off the print, and um, we'll take a look. All right, so the build is complete. And the extruder is still cooling, so I'm going to be really careful moving this piece aside. But here, what I'm going to do is I mentioned before about how easy it is with the blue tape to remove your item from the printer. As you can see, it just pops right off the plate. It's still warm here, um, as to be expected. But you can see that you know this is very similar to the design that I had before, minus the front piece of it. So I did remove that front lip. So the way I expect this to work essentially is this should just pop right on in and make a nice perfect cap. So let's get over to the workbench and try it out. Fresh off the printer. Here you can see it's been definitely a little bit different than the last one. It's got it a lot less material here on this bottom piece, but I'm thinking that that's going to solve it. So. Um, let's give it a shot. So let's uh, see if it fits. So starting from the back. Oh, also one other thing I did before I put this on while I was waiting for the print. I did tidy up the wires in here a bit. I actually removed the extra uh, exposed tip so there's no chance of anything, you know, short circuiting or moving around in there and also tucked these wires in a little bit nicer. So, um, so that's going to be good as well. Um, so let's get this in there. So back's all set. And there you go, actually that fit perfect. So back in my ZX Spectrum, I'm currently loading Pac-Land, uh, just another way to test a different game. Um, just thinking back on my build, some of the things that I think went well and didn't, and didn't go well. I think overall the build went, went relatively smoothly. It was uh, pretty straightforward to map out the pins and put that together. There was a few moments where I think I was a little confused about which pin went to which particular one, but it's just a matter of taking your time and really thinking it through. Um, one thing that I think I would change is the type of connector that I used um, f um, in order for me to plug the Atari joystick in. And I think this is the sort of type that I use where you see as, as the through hole design. It's designed that this would mount onto a printed circuit board and then you would solder the pins onto the circuit pathway. And this type of connector obviously is great if you have a design, but here I was more of a free form type of build. So um, this would be more the connector I'd want to use. You can see where on the rear here, the pins are, are sticking out essentially straight. They're not designed for a, for a printed circuit board. Um, and this would have been a lot better for me, I think overall, where I could essentially insert the wire in here, solder it down and have a little bit cleaner connector. Um, and I think that would have made the build a lot a lot better in the end, but I think for what we've got, it's, it's a good build. I was also pretty happy with the 3D print. Um, the case came out really nice. It took me a few tries to get the lid correct, um, but once I got that dialed in, it just snapped right in and it's a perfect fit. Um, reusing the molded um, you know, uh, cord from the Sega was a great idea. It kind of gives it more of a, a, finished, a finished look and really uh, you know, makes it look really nice. Um, so I am really, really, really pleased with, uh, with the overall design of this adapter board. So really, really happy with it. Um, so I'm going to get to playing a couple of games, testing it out, and we'll see you next time on RetroAxis.